Hi, in this video I'd like to talk about the viability of being a vegan as a Christian. And it's a topic that I've been thinking about recently and that I've thought about in the past but I didn't know what to say about it. But um, I've been doing some reading and I also watched one of the videos by David Kelly of Grassroots Vegan where he was talking about how compatible it is for a Christian to be vegan. And so I thought I'd do my own video on it and also refer to some Bible verses that will help Christians to understand why it is good to be a vegan and also for non-Christians to know what to say to Christians who claim that eating meat is allowed and God wants us to eat meat or he put animals on the earth for us to eat. So this is just my perspective on it. Christians sometimes feel entitled to eat meat because they will find Bible verses that support that and I think it's mainly a matter of them taking the verses out of context. I think when you read the Bible you do have to consider the time it was written in and the audience it was directed to to actually get something out of it and it's not just taking a sentence and then applying that sentence directly to your life without actually thinking about the context. So I'll be discussing the passages within the context it was written in and what I think would be the way to apply it in our life. And I think the attitude of indifference and entitlement behind the arguments that Christians give to not give up eating meat or to just continue supporting animal agriculture when it's obviously a cruel and not a very economically efficient way of eating. It does harm the way that Christians are perceived by non-Christian vegans because uh, most vegans are very sensitive and compassionate people and they do have a set of ideals and when they see that Christians are still eating meat I think it can be a bit jarring. So here are some Bible passages to consider. In Genesis 1 verse 29 God said, Look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. In verse 30 it says, And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And then in Genesis 2 verse 9 it says, The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and produced delicious fruit. So in Genesis 1 it shows that in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, who are the first humans that um, the Bible describes and being the first humans that God made, they lived off a diet mainly of fruit and probably other plant foods as well. Um, it's not very specific what other plant foods but it does make clear that they ate fruit and it was the first choice for them. And this is portrayed as the ideal. And um, other animals also ate plant foods. So there was no such thing as killing, um, there were no carnivores, and I think um, the carnivore, well the carnivorous nature of animals only happened after the fall, so after sin entered the world. Further confirmation that this is the ideal is found in other books of the Bible, such as in the book of Isaiah, which is a book that is authored by the prophet Isaiah. And its purpose is to call the nation of Judah back to God. Chapters 40 to 65 of the book of Isaiah are words of comfort that describe the future Redeemer and the kingdom to come. In Isaiah 65 verse 25 it says, The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. In those days no one will be hurt or destroyed on my holy mountain. I the Lord have spoken. No longer will people be considered old at 100. And in verse 21 it says, In those days people will live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of their own vineyards. So there's reason to think that before the fall of man and before sin entered the world, there was no need even for other animals to kill. Much less for us because we aren't designed as carnivores. If you uh, watch my 
other video, humans are herbivores, it does explain that while we're not herbivores or omnivores or carnivores, we could be described as frugivores or starchivores. So back to the book of Genesis, it says in Genesis 3 verse 17, And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. This is after sin. So this is after Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating fruit from the tree that he told them not to eat from. And it was after this that God said that they would have to work for their food. And this is when grain is mentioned. So grain is another food that he allowed them to eat. And in Genesis 7 verse 1, um, it talks about the story of Noah. It says, When everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, Go into the boat with all your family, for among all the people of the earth I can see that you alone are righteous. In verse 2, Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice, and take one pair of each of the others. So by this time, animals were going to be used as food and for sacrifice. In Genesis 9 verse 1 it says, Then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. All the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the fish in the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables. But you must never eat any meat that still has the lifeblood in it. This is a passage that some Christians will use to, to justify eating meat. But I don't think that it's a passage that should be used in that way because this was a passage that was in relation to the flood. And God allowed people to eat meat after the flood because the flood had wiped out all the vegetation and the only thing that they had to eat would be the animals. So it was like a, you could see it as a temporary concession and not necessarily something that God intended to be continued after that. So this is why we find certain passages such as Leviticus 11 verse 3 to 22 and Deuteronomy 14 verse 4 to 9 telling the Hebrews which animals they could eat and which ones they could not. These dietary laws, along with strict slaughtering procedures, were designed to wean mankind from meat. And it was never intended to be an example for all of time. In many of the prophetic books, sacrifices and flesh consumption are attacked. In Amos 5 verse 21 to 23 it says, I hate, I spurn your pilgrim feasts. I will not delight in your sacred ceremonies. When you present your sacrifices and offerings, I will not accept them, nor look on the buffaloes of your shared offerings. Spare me the sound of your songs. I cannot endure the music of your lutes. And then in Hosea 6 verse 6, God says, I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. And this passage is mentioned again in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew. And it tells us to think about this passage.